Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to discuss graphs of functions. Let's go ahead and do an example of sketching the graph of a piecewise function. So our piecewise function is f of x equals x plus 1 if x is greater than or equal to 2, and it's negative x plus 1 if x is less than 2. Let's go through this very carefully because piecewise functions are some of the hardest for people to learn to sketch. It takes a lot of practice. So let's do one piece at a time. Let's maybe start with the top piece here. So first, we're going to focus on the top piece. So first, we're going to focus on x plus 1. So you'll notice here that the graph of f of x is equal to the graph of x plus 1 if x is greater than or equal to 2. So we can actually plug in 2 here. If you do that, you get f of 2. And x is equal to 2, so we look at the top piece. So we get 2 plus 1, so we get 3. We have an ordered pair, x comma y, so 2 comma 3. Let's go ahead and start graphing what we have. So here's the y-axis. And then here is the x-axis. This is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis. And so we know something. We know we have an ordered pair at 2 comma 3. So I'm going to put some tick marks here. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. And we have an ordered pair here. I'm going to use yellow for the graph. Or no, I'll do blue. Let's do blue. Okay. And that's our one point we have on this x plus 1. Now we're going to use some knowledge. We know that x plus 1, y equals x plus 1, is a line with a positive slope. That means, in general, it's got to look like this, right? It's got to be rising because the slope is 1, so it's positive. We also know that our function is only equal to x plus 1 when x is greater than or equal to 2. So here's 2. So therefore, we're only going to draw the graph over here to the right of 2. So it's going to look like this. So this blue graph here is the line of x plus 1. And again, you know not to draw it over here to the left because we only care about x is greater than or equal to 2. Super key. All right. Now we're going to do the next part, which is a little bit more tricky. So I'm going to go back to, uh, let's stick with white, actually. Let's go back to white. So now let's look at negative x plus 1, which is the bottom piece. So here's a very powerful trick, which I'm going to show you. So you see this less than here. That means you're going to have a hole at x equals 2. At least initially. Sometimes when you're doing these problems, you'll have a hole, and the hole gets filled in. But whenever you have a less than, you're going to have a hole. So if you have a less than or a greater than, you're going to have a hole. Okay, Very key. And that is super helpful. <laughs> I just can't even uh, begin to explain how helpful that is. So to find the y value of the hole, what you do is you take this number and you put it where the x is. And you're not supposed to do that, right? Because if you plug in 2, you're supposed to use the first piece. So we're breaking the rules in order to find the whole. I'm just going to put it where the x is. So instead of negative x plus 1 is negative 2 plus 1, so it's negative 1. When x is 2, the y value is negative 1. But 2, negative 1, we have a whole. Okay, this always works. So to find the whole, which you know you're going to have if you have a less than or a greater than, you take the number and you put it there. But it's really important that you don't write f of 2 because that would be wrong, right? So we're just, it's like we're breaking the rules to find the whole. All right. The whole is at 2, negative 1. So uh, basically, I have a 2 there where the whole should be. So um, it's going to be like, let's just pretend it's, well, it's right there. I'm going to cover the 2. There's the whole. All right. And now we know we have to draw it to the left, right? So we have to figure out what it's going to go through. Well, you'll notice that if you plug in, for example, 1, if you look at f of 1, you look at the bottom piece because 1 is less than 2. So you get negative 1 plus 1, so you get 0. So when x is 1, y is 0. So we're here. Okay, we're here. And it also passes through this point here, because if you plug in 0, you get negative 0 plus 1, so you get 1. Right, plug in 0, you get 0 plus 1. So it's going to pass through these two points. And it's going to go this way. And you know it goes this way 
because you only care about x is less than 2. And again, this is a hole. It's an open circle. Okay, so we have a hole. Okay, it's like a little open circle. So that's how you graph a piecewise function. Um, it's really delicate. Again, for the top piece, it was pretty easy because we had a greater than or equal to. So we just plugged in the two. We got the, the y coordinate. And we knew to draw it this way because we only care about x is greater than or equal to two. And you knew it was going up because it has a positive slope. For the last one, we got a function with a negative slope and it's going down. You see, it is going down. Uh, and we saw that it had a hole. So we took the x value, we put it where the x was. We got the y value of the hole. And then we wanted to be a little bit better. So we found the intercepts. Like I plugged in one, we noticed it was zero. It's pretty obvious. And if you plug in zero, you get one. So you can pretty clearly see where it is. So yeah, that's how you graph a piecewise function. A little bit more challenging than um, regular functions. Hopefully this video has been helpful and you've learned some math. Until next time, good luck.